In this video, I'll show you how you can add navigation controls to your final quiz questions only after the learner has answered the question. I just finished a one-on-one -on -one session with one of my clients who purchased an hour of my time at CaptivateTeacher.com and uh, she had an interesting challenge. She wanted the course that she was working on to track knowledge check questions. Knowledge check questions do not contribute to the final score, but unfortunately the uh, LMS will not report on those particular questions. Here's the challenge that we face. This particular client of mine is using regular final quiz question slides throughout their course as essentially knowledge check questions. So when you return to the slide, let's say you move forward and then you click the back button here and return to this slide, the slide will be locked unlike a regular knowledge check question which would reset and give the learner an opportunity to answer it again. In this case though, she simply wanted to have a next button appear so that they could move forward in the event that they'd already answered this question. But they didn't want that next button to appear the first time they arrived on this slide. So here's my solution here. First thing we need to do is we need to create a tracking variable for each one of these final quiz questions that we're using as a knowledge check. So we're going to go into our project drop down menu and select variables, clicking on add new and we'll call this underscore question zero one. We're going to give it an initial value of zero and we'll go ahead and press save and now we can close the variables window. Next, we're going to write the advanced action we need that's going to show our hidden next button. We don't have it yet, so let's borrow it from slide number two here. I'm just going to copy this and we'll paste it onto our quiz question slide. Give it a proper name because when, of course, you're writing advanced actions that reference objects, it makes it a lot easier if it's called something other than Smart Shape 5. I'm going to call this Next Button, but you can call it whatever you wish. Right next to the label for our Next Button is this Visible and Output icon. If I click on this, you'll see a red line go through it. That means that this object is not visible in output, so people won't see it when they first arrive on this slide. So we have our variable to keep track of whether we visited this slide before. Now we need our advanced action. So click on Project, go into Advanced Actions, and we're going to call this Question 01 Enter. We're going to use two decision tabs to create this advanced action. The first tab we're just going to call enter and all we're going to do is we're going to increment our tracking variable by a value of 1. So if it's 0, it's going to be 1. If it's already 1, it's going to become 2 and so on. Next we're going to do our check decision tab. So I'm going to call this check and this is a conditional advanced action. So we're going to select the conditional tab and we're going to say if our variable question 01 is greater than the literal value of 1, we're simply going to show our next button. Let's save this as an action, click OK, and click Close. So we're going to make sure that on enter of this true-false question, we're going to execute advanced actions and choose our script that we just wrote. In this case, it's the only one we've got, but presumably if this is later on in your development, you might have many here. So. Let's test this out. We'll do a preview in HTML5 and browser and see if this works as expected. Okay, so is Canada the second largest country in the world? We'll say false. We'll hit submit, incorrect. And of course we move on to the rest of the course. If for some reason the learner goes back to this slide 
you'll see that the question has already been answered. It's disabled. I can't hit submit again. I can't do that and I can't make another selection here. But fortunately, I have this next button that allows me to return to the rest of the course. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.